Hi, this is an example problem from chapter 12 that has involves calorimetry with phase change. Pause for a moment and read the question. So in this case, we've got ice that is at zero degrees Celsius, and it's added to a container filled with a certain amount of water at 15 degrees Celsius. We're asked to find the equilibrium temperature, neglecting the heat capacity of the container, and then find the mass of ice that was melted. So uh, it's kind of hard to exactly predict what's going to happen here, so we're going to have to do a little bit of investigation here. We are, the uh, heat capacity of the container is negligible, so we've only got two objects that are exchanging heat, the ice and the water. Let's go ahead and draw a uh, temperature scale real quick here. So here's temperature. And uh, we begin down here with the ice. The ice initial zero degrees Celsius and we've got the water initial at 15 degrees Celsius and the uh, equilibrium temperature it could be anywhere in between here right so somewhere here we're gonna have some final temperature both for both of these now we don't know it could be down at zero still, if the water doesn't have enough heat to melt all the ice, then you're still going to have some ice and everything will be at zero. Or if the water has enough heat to melt all the ice and then continue to warm up the melted ice water, then it could end up somewhere above zero, right? So there's a lot of possibilities. Uh, to figure this out, let's see how much heat it would take to melt all the ice. That's going to be a phase change. It's going to be a QL, and this is for the fusion phase change transition. And now we're going to compare also how much heat, what's the total amount of heat available to transfer to the ice from the water. And we'll see and compare these two values. So that's going to be a QC because it remains liquid water, same phase, but the temperature is going to change. And of course, this is for the ice. Now, we remember that this formula, the mass of the water times the specific heat of the water, times delta T, the temperature change for the water, we know that. And for the uh, phase change, let's go back and look at our equation sheet here. Here's our formula, Q equals plus or minus ML. And uh, we need to pick the plus or minus sign. This diagram helps us a bit. If you go from solid to liquid, it takes a gain of heat to move in that direction. And we're going in that direction. Gain of heat means plus. So we're going to choose the positive sign in this case. So there we go, that's the constants we have. And again, I said we chose the positive because it takes a heat to come in to melt ice. And let's see to melt all the ice, how much heat is it gonna take here? So we got five kilograms of ice. And now we need to look up the value for L sub F, the latent heat of fusion for ice water phase transition. And uh, let's see, latent heat of fusion, LF, here it is, water, 33.5 times 10 to the fourth joules per kilogram. Kilograms cancel out, and when we plug this into the calculator, we see that the uh, total heat to melt all the ice is equal to 1,600,000. 75,000 joules. Of course, that's positive. Uh, let's see how much heat is available from the water. Is there enough heat to melt all that ice or not? Let's calculate it. So for the mass of the water, we've got 10 kilograms. 
latent heat of the water, 4,186 joules kilogram degree Celsius, multiplied by the temperature change of the water, T final minus T initial. So we're going to say all the way to zero for the water, right? That means the final temperature is zero. And we started initially at zero degree, 15 degrees Celsius. That's the maximum heat that can be extracted from the water. So plugging this all into the calculator, the heat that can be extracted from the water, it's negative because it comes out of the water, 627,900 hundred joules. Now if we compare these two, we see that uh, we don't have enough. This is too small to melt all the ice. It would take more heat energy from the water to melt all the ice. So in that case we know for sure that uh, we're not going to be able to melt all the ice. In fact the final equilibrium temperature it is going to be zero and there's going to be some ice remaining. So for part A, we come up with uh, T final equals zero degrees Celsius because there's not enough heat in the water to melt all of the ice. Now to do part B, we need to go ahead and do a little calorimetry here. So this is part A. Part B, we're going to go ahead and do a calorimetry problem add up all the Q's and they sum to zero. We've got a Q for the ice that gets melted and we've got a Q for the water that cools down and they sum to zero. Now for this one we have to go ahead and uh, we don't know we can't use QL ice that we calculated before because that was for all the ice to melt. Here we're gonna say how much ice was melted, we don't know. So I'm going to have QLF. It's going to be a positive M ice, positive because it gains heat, multiplied by the latent heat of fusion for ice water. And then for the QC, I can actually use this value right here because we know it is going to cool all the way down to zero. So all that heat is going to be going here. So let me just put this down here plus a negative 627,900 joules. That's QC for the water. Add them up and you get zero. Now we want to solve for the mass of the ice. We need to divide to move this term 627 to the other side of the equation. Then we need to divide by L sub F, right? L sub F, which we remember is equal to 33.5 times 10 to the fourth joules per kilogram. Now the joules will cancel and 1 divided by kilograms is going to be equal to kilograms, right? So when we put this into the calculator we get a value 1.87 kilograms of ice. That's the amount of ice that you can melt from the water cooling from 15 to 0 degrees so at the end, we are left with a mixture of ice and water at zero degrees Celsius. And in fact, uh, we still have, we had five kilograms, we've melted 1.87 kilograms. So we still got a little over three kilograms of ice floating in the water at zero degrees Celsius.